Hello and welcome back to this channel. Dear students, today's topic is FIR filter design. We will, we will discuss the derivations of uh, different techniques used for FIR filter designing. This is the topic related to subject digital signal processing that is DSP for TE and TC students. First of all, what is FIR? As I mentioned, FIR stands for finite impulse response. Impulse response is denoted by H of N. Recall the notation. Input is denoted by X of N. So X of N stands for input. Output is denoted by Y of N. That means Y of N stands for output. And H of N is known as impulse response of the system. If you want to design a filter, what you are supposed to do? You will have to design the value of H of N. That is value of impulse response of a filter. If H of N has limited number of samples. That means number of samples in H of N is not infinity. There are finite number of samples. Then it is known as FIR filters. That is finite impulse response filter. Now, there are two important characteristics of FIR filter. First is all FIR filters are inherently stable. That means by default, FIR filters are stable and second important characteristic of FIR filter is FIR filters are having linear phase response. That means if you draw the graph of phase for FIR filter then this graph is linear. So it is said that FIR filters are having linear phase response. These are two important characteristics of FIR filter. Now before starting the derivation let me explain you in brief the concept of one technique that is known as windowing method or window method which is used to design the FIR filter. In this session we will derive the expression for window method as well as we will discuss one important concept concept rather very important concept related to window method that is called uh, Gibbs phenomena. Okay first I will explain what is this windowing method. Suppose I have a sine wave. For the simplicity, I am considering continuous waveform. Actually, it is applicable for discrete uh, waveform. If this waveform is a sinusoidal, which is from 0 to infinity, I want to filter out this waveform. Then, the length of filter, that means length of impulse response or number of samples required in designing of H of N will be very, very large, will be infinity. To avoid this, what I will be doing, I will design one equation function like this. Its amplitude is 1. If I will take multiplication of these two waveforms, then since its amplitude is 1, this part will get multiplied with 1 and you will get the same part as the output, whereas this remaining part will get cancelled because this function is only, let us say, up to m minus 1. M is some fixed value. Say M is 10, then this value will be from 0 to 9 in case of a discrete sequence. This technique is known as a window method. Why window method? Because original signal was still infinity. I don't want to filter out infinity signal at a time. So what I am doing, I am taking out only required portion from this. How I took out this? I have multiplied this entire signal which was still infinity with some function whose amplitude is 1 and what's present from 0 to some finite value 0 to m minus 1. So I could take out only limited portion, only finite portion. This thing, this concept is known as windowing method. Now this type of window which I have used to take out a uh, required number of samples. Since the shape of this window is rectangular, it is known as the rectangular window. This is the concept of windowing method or rather the concept of FR filter. Now we will derive the expression for a rectangular window. There are different notations which we will be using. First is HD of N. HD of N is known as desired filter response. Desired filter response. Let us say it is from 0 to infinity. Just now I have explained you the concept. I don't want to filter out infinity samples at a time. So I will be multiplying it with some window function. The shape of this window is rectangular. So it is known as rectangular window. Its amplitude is 1 length or this presence of this window function is from 0 to m minus 1. This is known as rectangular window. 
Now, the notation is for a window, basic notation is W, since it is rectangular, at the base I am writing R, R represents rectangular, and it is a discrete signal, so W R of N is the notation for rectangular window. If I will take multiplication of this thing, then only values from 0 to M minus 1 will get multiplied with 1, so these values will be taken out as it is. This sequence is denoted by H of N, which is obtained by multiplying H D of N into W R of N, where W R of N is the window function. This is the basic technique of using the window method or using the rectangular window. Now, what I said, this is the window function. For the simplicity, I have drawn the uh, uh, continuous graph. Actually, it is discrete graph like this in form of pulses. Okay. So this signal is existing from 0 to m minus 1 and its amplitude is 1. So I have written mathematically as W R of n, that is rectangular window, is equal to 1 for n is equal to 0 to m minus 1. On this axis, I am plotting n. Now, same thing can be expressed in terms of unit step as u of n minus u of n minus m. You need to remember, uh, uh, memorize this simple thing. Rectangular window is having amplitude 1 from 0 to m minus 1. That means it is u of n minus u of n minus m. Reason is u of n is from 0 to infinity. u of n minus m is from m to infinity. So if you subtract it, you will be getting same thing. You don't have to write all these things in the exam. You just simply remember this formula. It is u of n minus u of n minus m. Now for this derivation, you need to memorize again one simple formula. If you take Fourier transform of this, then Fourier transform of unit step U of n is 1 upon 1 minus e raised to minus j omega. Whereas this is again unit step but delayed by m samples. So this basic equation write it as it is. And since it is delayed by m this position, multiply this term by e raised to minus j omega m. Only this two equations, two things you need to memorize, you can derive the entire derivation it's very simple so same thing see what i said Fourier of u of n is this equation Fourier of u of n minus one simply write this equation as it is multiplied it with e raised to minus j omega m if i will combine if i will take the lcm denominators are same so i will write it like this in the denominator one minus e raised to minus j omega in the numerator for first term i have one for second term i have this 1 minus e raised to minus j omega m. Now, remaining thing, one mathematical well-known identity, if we have e raised to uh, 0, then you are getting answer is equal to 1. That means, in another language, if you want to represent 1 in terms of e raised to something, then that should be e raised to 0. So, if I want to implement this technique, for 1, I will write it like this, e raised to j omega m by 2 into e raised to minus j omega m by 2. It's not at all complicated. Listen carefully. For 1, I have written these two terms. How come this is e raised to plus j omega m, m by 2 into e raised to minus j omega m by 2. This is into. So, addition of powers takes place. So, e raised to j omega m by 2 minus j omega m by 2 becomes e raised to 0 and e raised to 0 is 1. So, I have represented this one by these two terms. This is just for the mathematical simplification. This term, I will represent it like this. This second term is e raised to minus j omega m. I will write it like this e raised to minus j omega m by 2 into e raised to minus j omega m by 2. Again, I am only talking of second term. This is e raised to minus j omega m. I have split it into two parts. If you simplify this, this is e raised to minus j omega m by 2 into e raised to minus j omega m by 2. This value minus j omega m by 2 is called power of the term. In case of multiplication, addition of powers takes place. That means e raised to minus this minus j omega m by 2 plus minus j omega m by 2 will become e raised to minus j omega m. But at the same thing, divided by. For this one, I will write same technique e raised to j omega by 2 into e raised to minus j omega by 2. Similar to this term. You will get e raised to 0 and e raised to 0 is 1. For second term, it is e raised to minus j omega. I will write it e raised to minus j omega by 2 into e raised to minus j omega by 2. 
I have simply done some mathematical manipulation in order to convert the equation in the standard form. Now, what I am supposed to do? From this numerator term, I will take this term common. So, it is e raised to minus j omega m by 2. This is taken common from the numerator term. So, remaining term is this first term e raised to plus j omega m by 2 minus this term is remaining e raised to minus j omega m by 2. Similarly, from the denominator term, I will take this term common. So, I will write it like this e raised to minus j omega by 2 in the bracket. Remaining term is, I have taken e raised to minus j omega by 2 common. So, remaining is e raised to plus j omega by 2, this term minus one term is remaining from this e raised to minus j omega by 2. So, I have simplified it up to this step. Now, use one mathematical identity. If you have e raised to j theta minus e raised to minus j theta, according to the mathematical identity, its answer is 2j sin theta. Theta can be anything. Same technique, I, see, first I will write, uh, this is the equation of uh, wr of omega, I will write this notation first, wr of omega is equal to, these two terms, I am keeping it as it is, so it is e raised to minus j omega m by 2 divided by e raised to minus j omega by 2, I have kept these terms as it is, this term, I am using this identity e raised to j theta minus e raised to minus j theta is 2j sin theta. Instead of theta, we have this term omega m by 2. This represents theta. So, for the numerator term, corresponding equation will be 2j sin theta in the numerator term is this term omega m by 2 divided by same rule, same identity I am using for denominator term e raised to j omega by 2 minus e raised to minus j omega by 2. In this case, theta will be omega by 2 if I want to make use of this uh, identity. So, answer will be 2j sin omega by 2. Now, remaining part is simple. This 2j, 2j gets cancelled. If I will transfer this term to the numerator, then I will write new equation e raised to minus j omega m by 2. I am transferring this term to the numerator, so it becomes e raised to plus j omega by 2 into remaining terms. I am writing it as it is sin omega m by 2 divided by sin omega by 2. Now, last step. I will take e raised to j omega by 2 minus j omega by 2. I will take e raised to minus j omega by 2 common. So, I will get in the bracket. I am taking minus sign outside and j omega by 2 outside. So, it becomes plus m minus 1 or make it simple. Write it like this. Only take e raised to minus j omega outside. So, if you are taking e raised to minus j omega common, First term becomes m by 2, second term becomes minus because I have already taken minus sign common 1 by 2. So it is minus j omega m minus 1 by 2 into sin omega m by 2 divided by sin of omega by 2. This is the derivation of a rectangular window function. Now, related to this uh, window equation, we'll derive, uh, we'll discuss one concept which is known as the Gibbs phenomena. The Gibbs phenomena is a very, very important concept as far as the designing of FR filters is considered. What we discussed in the derivation, final output H of N is expressed as HD of N, HD of N is desired impulse response into WR of N. W R of N is known as rectangular window or it is simply called as window function. 
If you take Fourier transform, then Fourier transform of H of n is denoted by H of omega, which is HD of omega. Now, this multiplication, this sign indicates multiplication. This becomes convolution when you take a Fourier transformation. So, in case of normal domain, if it is multiplication, in Fourier, it becomes convolution. Convolution is denoted by notation H3 into WR of omega. Where WR of omega is Fourier transform of WR of n. Now, due to convolution, certain side lobes are present in the equation. Now, what is this concept of side lobe? Actually, the desired impulse response is like this. It is the uh, same as the graph of low pass filter or it is same like the response of rectangular window. But you are taking convolution and you are transferring the, uh, transforming the equation into frequency domain. So, this graph as shown in this by dotted line, this is the ideal graph. It is not remaining ideal. There are variations. Actually, this part from 0 to 1, my, uh, 0 to 1 is known as pass band. Remaining part from 1 onwards is known as stop band. So, what I said, due to convolution, there are variations in the pass band as well as variations in the stop band. These variations are known as ringing or it is also called as ripples. So, there are variations in the pass band or stop band which we call it as ringing or ripples. This concept is happening in case of rectangular window. Why? Because in case of rectangular window, this value is 0, this value is m minus 1. From 0 to m minus 1, the amplitude is 1 like this, it is constant. At m minus 1, suddenly amplitude becomes 0 from the value 1. So, there is a sudden change from 1 to 0 at one instant at one value m minus 1. Due to this sudden change, there are ringing ripples in the pass band as well as stop band. This particular concept is known as Gibbs phenomena. As I mentioned, why it is taking place? This is because there is a sudden change in the frequency response of rectangular window where its value becomes 0 from 1 at 1 instant that is m minus 1. This concept is Gibbs phenomena. How to avoid it? Very simple logic. This is taking place in case of rectangular window due to sudden change. So some other types of windows are used. I have drawn the diagrams for other types of windows. This is the, the final outer diagram is for rectangular window. Other windows are having window, having window, blackman or triangular window. These are not having the sudden change. These represent the smooth change in the window function. So, instead of rectangular window, if you use any other types of windows, then these ripples or ringing can be avoided. So, this is the concept of Gibbs phenomena. Dear students, this, that's it for derivations and uh, Gibbs phenomena concepts as far as FR designing is concerned. In the next session, we will solve numericals related to FR designing. Till then, thanks for watching this video. Thank you very much.